Hello, my name's James Mandelbaum, and today we're here to cover Gigamon Basics, configuring Fabric Manager version 5.8 and above. If you're trying to configure versions 5.7 and below, please watch my other video. The agenda today, we're going to review what Fabric Manager is, we're going to go through the installation options, we're going to configure via the command line, and then we're going to log into the graphical interface. First, it's important to understand what Fabric Manager is, and simply put, it's a single pane of glass orchestration layer to manage everything Gigamon. It doesn't matter whether we're looking at physical on-premises appliances, we're looking at virtual, whether we're doing VMware, or we're doing ESX NSX, or other virtual environments like OpenStack, as well as our cloud, which is Amazon, AWS, as well as Azure, Google, and other clouds. It's all managed from the single interface. It provides automation through built-in wizards to configure flow maps, inline bypass, SSL, other types of things that, yes, you can do them step-by-step, step, but the wizards just make it a lot easier. The other thing is, if you're trying to do automation, if you're doing things like Ansible, Chef, Puppet, or you have a SOAR tool that triggers off automated process, we have an open API that's incorporated into Fabric Manager, and that is your single point of entry for those calls. Fabric Manager is designed to be run as a virtual appliance, and quite honestly, the number one appliance deployment is that via OVA for VMware. Of course, we also provide it as an ISO for VMware, so if you want to build it from scratch, you can. That allows you to do customized options for your environment. Most times, though, taking the OVA and simply tweaking the settings will do what most people need. We also have an ISO for Microsoft Hyper-V and KVM, and there's a separate installation guide on how to configure those. Today, we're going to be covering the VMware. To configure it the very first time, you'll need to either use the Virtual Host Console or SSH into the box. The first time you do so, you'll need to log in using the username of admin, and the default password is going to be lowercase admin 123 capital A bang. Now you'll see sometimes in the documentation that default password is admin 123 capital A bang bang. And that was done because there were a couple iterations that were released that does have that. So if you're going through this and you try the single bang and it doesn't work, then use the double bang and you'll be good to go. Now once you log in the first time, it's going to ask you to type the password again and then create a new password. You can't get by it if you try to, it'll kick you out and make you do it again. The important thing to remember when you're creating the password is it has to be 11 characters. It also has to include one numeric, one uppercase, one lowercase, and one special character. Now, once we've done the password change, we're gonna be dropped to the command prompt and we'll type in fmctl jump hyphen start. That'll bring up a menu system to move around in the menu system, you'll use tabs and arrows, and at the very end, you'll tab down to OK. That'll save your settings and apply them, and then you can close the menu and you're good to go. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to type in the username admin. Password is going to be admin123, capital A, bang. It's going to ask me to change the password. However, it's important to remember it's asking you for the current password, which is admin123a, bang. It's now going to ask me for a new password. Remember the characteristics, 11 characters, the numeric, upper, lower, and special. The other thing is it does have a password dictionary, so you can't use common passwords. All right, so we are logged in. We are now ready to begin the configuration. So the command is fmctl jump dash start. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and give it a host name. And as I said, tab moves you around your choices, but your arrows within the menu.
It's going to come back and complain if you have a non POSIX host name. In my case, I'm accepting that. I'm going to say OK. And it's going to update my, my box. And I am good to go. From this point, we are done at the command line. We're going to go ahead and connect via the graphical user interface with our browser. We're going to log in using admin and the password admin 123A, capital A, bang bang. The console and the graphical interface have different credential stores, so whatever you put in for the command line is different from what you have for the browser. That's because the browser supports rule-based access controls that allow you to provide different capabilities within the graphical interface. By default, when you HTTP on port 80, it will redirect you. You can turn that off if you don't want to have that, but by default, it just makes it easier. Now, SSH is enabled by default on port 22. You can go in at the command line and change the port that it listens to, as well as turning off SSH if you want. Let's go ahead and fire up the browser and get started. I'm going to connect to the box via the graphical interface by typing in either the domain name or the IP. Now it is a self-signed cert, so it should come back and complain until you replace the cert. So we're going to go ahead and connect to the box. I am going to type in the username admin, followed by admin 123 capital A bang bang. Now that I'm logged in, it will require me to accept the EULA. So I'll click on the EULA. I can scroll through and read it if I so choose. But like most of you, I'm just going to go ahead, scroll down, accept the terms, and say OK. At that point, Fabric Manager is now up and configured and ready to go. Remember, if you need to configure the box, you'll need to log in. And the command is fmctl jump hyphen start to rerun the menu system. And as you do things, remember, save your changes. Thank you very much. Look for my other videos on the Gigamon community page, as well as the Gigamon YouTube channel, and be sure to follow me on Twitter.